is going on you guys welcome back to the channel I am back on the fire blade I literally made a video yesterday about uh, the update about this bike and uh, kind of the surprise about getting a new bike if you guys didn't watch yesterday's video or the last video then you should check it out uh, I announced something at the end of the video <laughs> but yeah today is a video where we are going to be taking the bike to PDM and we're finally Troy and Brent should be there yeah we're going to go take care of the check engine light and all that stuff and fix this tune at last so yeah the bike ran good yesterday I forgot to update you guys and tell you that like you know I rode it that was the second time today's the third time you're riding it and it never did the idling thing uh the idling thing the you know limpmo thing sorry I haven't had breakfast I just woke up like 30 minutes ago <laughs> uh so yeah it didn't do like it didn't die on me like it did like those a uh, couple times in the video that I explained so the bike is idling good at around 15,000 rpm as you guys can see everything seems fine with the bike just need to uh, get rid of that check engine light or see why the check engine light is there so yeah hopefully we're gonna get this bike done I might also go back and take the Aprilia there because uh, if you guys didn't know uh, BT Moto uh, are making velocity stacks for the Aprilia now I don't know if I said to go back and get the fire blade. I meant to get go back and get the RSV4, the Aprilia. Yeah, they make velocity stack for that bike. I might go back and get that bike so they can install it. We'll see. I'm not really like in a rush. That bike is good and everything. But since they're here, I might still. I just need to get a ride to go back home and grab the other bike while I work on this. Like it's so fast. I honestly, the one thing about the SC Projects exhaust is that it's like crazy loud. Like I keep saying this every time I ride this bike. I love the new headers and everything like that, but there's a small chance that I put, might put back the Acro muffler. I probably won't, but <laughs> it just attracts so much attention, you know what I mean? As I said in the last video, it's literally like a bright red color and it's like definitely one of the loudest bikes because it just screams like in all RPMs. I was comparing it to the H2 with the way it sounds and how it screams, but the H2 only screams if it's like high up in the RPM. This bike is always screaming. Hold on a sec, let's appreciate this sky and view. Look at all the green hills from like the two weeks of rain. These clouds, they look photoshopped. I'm getting a little too distracted. I need to see where I'm going. <laughs> Butter. This bike is butter in the corners. So effortless. Also, I did want to inform you guys that unfortunately I am not going to be going to the track. I was supposed to be going to the track this weekend actually. Uh, sadly, I will not be. Uh, when I went to sign up, there was only level 4, which is usually there is level 1, 2, 3 in that track. Level 1 is the beginners. Level 2 is like the intermediate which is what I've done in the past and level three is like the really like you know hardcore people which I usually don't do just because people say it's dangerous and people go on racing and stuff like that so yeah that's level three and level four are kind of like you have to be faster than a certain time I think it's uh, 140 yeah your lap uh, time should be uh, 140 and my best time was 143 so you know like my best time wasn't even like valid to be in that level and those are like people with full-on track bikes and stuff like that so I also didn't really want to be uncomfortable so yeah that's why I'm not gonna be going to the track because only level 4 was available I couldn't get level any of the other ones What's up? oh the Nürburgring is back so what did it make? Um, huh? 195? Yeah. What did the rush do? That's a big difference. The same engine, everything. It just the exhaust opens up, but on the bottom end, it feels like shit compared to the, the rush. The 
rush feel is so much better. Mid range bottom end, this thing is just like perfect for bottom end. Very interesting. He's a, he's a back rusher. He's a yeah. 183 and that's great. 195 and this bike is so light. Yeah, I think 390 or something. That's insane. Oh yeah, definitely. I'll definitely film a review on this now that it's tuned and pretty much all done. Yeah. Does anyone even make filters for these? Yeah. There you go, sir. Uh, the seat is. Let's see. <laughs> yeah. Because I had to keep taking it off. I just barely hand tighten it just so it's so the bolts don't fly off. Easy peasy. I hate these clips. There you go. She's all ready for you. No sprocket. Stock. Yeah. It has the check engine light. And it's always in Celsius. And when you go into the setting menu. Yeah. It's, it doesn't make sense at all. And I switched it back to the tune that you guys gave me before. What we're going to do is we're going to force a U.S. file into it, so it'll be a U.S. file. Okay. Yeah, it's kind of iffy. Yeah, look, look, like, look how weird that is. I can change everything else, but for whatever reason, the temperature, no, I can't. We'll get it started, then. So weird. Let's go grab your R's before we're going to do some more kind of thing. All right, sounds good. Once you fix it, we'll go over it. Okay, we'll go over it, explain what happened and what quick, they did. Verify it's good, then we'll talk about it. Perfect. Really the idling is per... Yeah, the idling is perfect. It's idling at like 15 now, so that was fixed. And also, it uh, since the last updated file, it hasn't died on me. Yesterday, I rode it just to double check again. So that was my second time riding it, it and it didn't do that limp mode or whatever that was. So it's currently, as far as I know, it's just that check engine light and the that unit thing. Battery strong on it. Oh yeah. All right, we're gonna go grab the ape. Be right back, guys. The bike is perfect. It literally doesn't need anything else. The idling is like perfect. It's like right around like 14, slightly goes down to 13, but like it's, it's perfect. It's not like pulsing. It didn't. I went through a lot of like lights uh, to see if it's going to like, you know, start like doing that pulsing and then maybe die because that's kind of like what would happen usually. Perfect. I went through everything. I full throttled it. The bike feels amazing. Perfect. Feels really fast. I even did the sixth gear. Because usually when it happened to me twice, I was in sixth gear about like 70, 80 ish. And I was just cruising and I tried doing that and it was fine. Yeah, that one again, like, it's weird because like I've done it and then like when I went back and did it, it happened. So I'll definitely ride it more, see if that issue specifically comes back. But like the last few rides, because even the last file before this with the yeah that one it didn't like the issue didn't come up and i rode it like two three times so yeah this this is the tune with like full power and everything right that's all i care about is the bike because the bike uh, running wise it's running perfect no yeah no stalling no nothing the power feels amazing yeah, there's a lot of like cars. I couldn't get like crazy on it in all gears, yeah. but like I got in it in like a few different gears and it felt like perfect. No, it's it's crazy that you knocked it out from like the first try. Everything and even with the idling, I was like for sure that's gonna like need to be raised. But like this is idling pretty low, but at the same time it's it's perfect. Yeah, I actually. Yeah, I'd rather it idle like a bit lower like this right now because it's not too loud. Like before when I was stopped, it's it's a very loud bike. So I'm like, now it's it's perfect. Dude, I literally uh, on the way like here, I was like, I can't believe like I'm so obsessed with the Honda. Like, yeah, it's it's it blows my mind. Like the sound, the feel, like the the only other bike that feels this aggressive is the H2, but it's not like bad aggressive. Like the H2 is a little jumpy. This is it literally reminds me of the Plaid, 
where like the faster I go, the more it pulls. And I'm like, how? How is this, in my opinion, the best sound in the higher pitch? Mm -hmm. It doesn't sound like any like it. Yeah. It's so raspy. It is kind of similar to the H2. It has that raspy, like, high-pitched screaming. But this is, the H2 is like that up top. This is always like this, so I love it. Yeah, this is weirdly, like, I guess one of my favorite bikes. It's so weird to say, just because, you know, it's the last bike of the collection. I got it because I was like, it just looks cool. And the numbers are cool. But when I rode it, I'm like, I can't believe it has this much character and it feels this good. No, I definitely like That must be factory. I'm telling you, this bike had like 200 miles, completely bone stock, completely. The previous owner apparently like raced for Aprilia, so he had a full like this same bike but track only, and this was his kind of like street bike, but he never rides on the street, so he literally just had it ever since it came out, only had 200 miles, and then he, the same guy himself put on consignment with the dealership, the Aprilia dealership. Mm -hmm. That's why when I walked in, I had no plans of buying an Aprilia. But I saw it, and this is my favorite color year and body style. So when I saw it, and it's like 200 miles, and it's pretty much brand new, I'm like, I have to take it. I'm so excited to ride this now. Because people, the thing is, I put the headers on it, and people are expecting me to take it to me, to ride it. Yeah, and I haven't been, just because I, I'm too worried. I don't know like much about it, and that limp mode thing was the first time it ever happened. Same. We didn't tighten these, right? We just literally put the seat. Yeah, no. They must have tightened themselves. This one is good, but this one's like hella in. That's why I was confused. I was like, we literally just put the seat on. No. That means I rode it good. Yeah, rattled itself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Now she is good. Back in place. Everything's solid. Ooh, that, that exhaust is starting to get colorful. From the inside, way more. Like from this side, you guys can't see it. I'm trying to show you, like right here, I don't know if you guys can see. It's like almost purple all the way up here, but not on the outside. I want it to be on the outside. It needs a couple uh, dyno runs. That's what it needs. I mean, it's, it's perfect because it's going to be a comparison. So I just rode these two back to back. And I was saying that this is fast, but this definitely feels like faster and more aggressive. So now after this is done, I'll ride it and see if it feels equivalent now. You know what I mean? Because it's going to be supposedly like faster and better. Yeah. Uh huh. They just go. I think this was the easiest one where we, you literally just came, tuned it, and it was yeah. done. Perfect. Super. Yeah, yeah. Preferred. Yeah, it's... They don't break, they don't blow up. You know. Yeah. Well, there you guys heard it. If you're thinking about Aprilia. Yeah, they really, uh... Underappreciated, I'd say. They're definitely underappreciated. Yeah. Just for what they cost. Um, How many times do you hear about issues? There's electrical issues, and those happen right when you get the bike. You really got one. Yeah. Yeah, like I have my fuel pump issue, like you guys will see, or I think it's the fuel pump, yeah, that starting issue. Yeah. So the Triple R's first came out, um, modifying them was kind of a black art. There was a lot of people that were just kind of like comparing stuff to the European. They were changing the airbox out, they were putting European uh, 
ECU in there, which is like more de restricted than the United States. And it was like a popular modification, so obviously like it's not the right way to do it. So when we were understanding what they did with the airbox, which was a good modification, obviously, in their velocity stacks. Ours are better, but those are an upgrade. Um, we noticed the differences. The computer's obviously tied in with the dash. So anything European, when you put it in, it'd be like little glitches and errors. It'd be in kilometers, it'd be in Celsius. You'd have to go manually in the menu and like change some stuff back. I always thought it was glitchy and it wasn't our procedure to force European software on it. We knew how to tune the bike correctly. We knew what the Europeans were doing. Um, some people were just putting the file in cheap, quick and dirty, you know, get some more power, but it really wasn't the right way to do it. So we did notice those same glitches this bike, when you purchased it, it looked like it was bone stock. And we started to take it apart and we're like, okay, it's got a tune on it. Okay, it's got velocity stacks in it. Okay, it's missing a screw here and there. Even though it was dead new, someone had done that package, which another vendor was selling. It was, you know, it was popular in the beginning. It was the only option. So when you tune European software on US bikes, we don't believe there's like a one-to-one -one there. There's a couple glitches and problems. So what we did now to fix a couple of the things in the dash you didn't like is we just put this bike back to its native US software, the way it was shipped, then recalibrate, recalibrated it correctly. Um, there's some changes I think people don't know behind the scenes. Even the European bike is a different earth sprocket. So if you're putting that software in there, you could have quick shifter problems. All that has to be aligned. There's an algorithm in the bike um, for it to ride well. So now it's back to the way it should be, and all of your issues disappear. So, anyone Perfect. that has problems like that, I mean, a lot of people, small things like the Celsius and the Fahrenheit don't bother them, but do it right the first time. I'm a, I'm a perfectionist, yeah, yeah and right you you knocked it out super quick. We literally went to pick up this for like 10 minutes, and this was all done, so. So, we've spent probably way too much time studying this bike and this computer compared to the other ones. It's very very different compared to what we're used to. It's very different from the other Japanese bikes. So we do have a wealth of knowledge of getting the bike to do whatever people want to do when they modify or take it to the track um, versus just like a canned fix. So a lot of people contact us because they have sprocket changes and the shifter doesn't work anymore. They have tire changes and the bike kind of falls apart traction control wise. So we have all the mapping to dial that in um, on top of just like making a fast street bike. So it's definitely a great product. It's definitely one of the better leader bikes you can buy. The motor's fantastic. It's a Honda. It's reliable. Um, but there's definitely some quirks that need to be figured out with the software. We got that. We got that down pat. We're proud of it. So um, yeah, anyone interested in modifying one of these, feel free to contact us. We can run you through A to Z how to make a reliable monster. Perfect. Should be about it. And um, we got them uh, over 200 miles an hour. So yep, yep. There's done. multiple speed limiters in them. Mm -hmm. um, the one that works on the dyno doesn't work on the, sh the road, so we figured that out. Um, we have a few of these bikes, 215, 218 miles an hour, um, with very few mods. A couple of them even with extended swing arms at the drag strip running low eights. I mean, they're really. That's crazy. Um, they're not as tinkered with and modified. Most people use them for a track bike, but I mean, we've seen our customers use them for all sorts of purposes. Um, and the bike excels, you know, time and time again. So we'll see now the level of the playing field by putting our velocity stacks in this bike with the most updated map. And you'll be able to compare, you know, the Italian 1100 with the best that Honda has to offer. Yeah, I'm I'm excited. Honestly, I might make that like a separate video to do a proper comparison. If you want, you can ride like one of them too, and we can like swap. Yeah. That would be fun too. The thing we do for the power is great and all, but it's overall rideability, like you said, with the idle hopping around stuff like that. Mm -hmm. We pride ourselves in the fact that not only do we get the top speed set and done, wide open throttle stuff, which is what most tuners only care about. We care about partial throttle, idle, how it starts up the overall package of tuning. We basically want an OEM package that like you start this bike up and you ride it and you can't tell it's tuned. It just performs. Yeah. That's how you want it. I talked about that when, when I first started working with you guys on the Ducati. Because when you guys did my V4R, I was like, this is not just 
like the quick shifter feels better a lot of things felt better not just oh yeah the bike is a bit faster I'm dealing with two type A people yeah you know someone I mean I've come out of a sound sleep and thrown my laptop open at 2 a.m. because I thought of something it's definitely an illness but it benefits customers as well no it's perfect that's why we get along yeah no the difference is like a lot of people with drag records and other things we do that too but that's like one getting it down the tracks one thing but like you'll see yeah. in the pits like stalling mm -hmm. breaking up just overly driving like shit so we realize that that's like small percentage of customers just care about that what you really care about is you just throw your leg over it and you want it to drive well yeah and when you add any sort of airflow modification especially the honda if you put a pipe on this bike it like barely cruises down the street it's like breaking up i mean it's very sensitive to fuel it's very sensitive to airflow um you know brilliant not so much bmw not so much but this like particular bike can be absolutely miserable if the software is not dialed in yeah you know, if you just get this thing and you're like okay i'm gonna buy a full pipe i'm gonna go two up on the sprocket i'm gonna change the rear tire size i'm gonna put an air filter in it you've actually made the bike significantly worse so it's either like you do it right or you don't do it at all mm. because there's no like in between they're just they're too smart now um you know the the exhaust valve that the that the triple r has with the factory actor provic the whole entire fuel map is designed around that so if you pull that out it's just a nightmare it just drives breaks up it's just you know even full throttle on the dyno it was um you'll audibly hear it detonate ping at like six seven thousand rpms just has no fuel so getting that sorted it's a monster without that it's the worst bike out of all the ones you can purchase because it's got like 160 wheel horsepower it won't hold 40 going down the street and it stalls at every red light the second you put a pipe on it but once you fix all that it's an absolutely sublime just amazing machine that made me scratch my head whether it was better than the bmw or not i mean i said uh one time i don't know if as a complete package uh, there's a lot that goes into that, but like speed wise with how fast it is, this definitely feels faster. Like I cruise with like one hedge cause I'm talking, you know, casual all the time. When I, that one day I rode like the M1000 and the M1000 is stage three, you know, like that bike is, you know, it's a very crazy bike. And then I got on this third gear and I just gave it a little bad gas and I felt like I was going to fall off. I was like, what the hell? A lot of like, it's not necessarily like what the dyno says. It's like the whole package, like how it's geared, how yeah. it weighs how it feels, how responsive it is. Um, even slow bikes can be extremely responsive and fun. Honda's kind of got it going on. What they need to do is just put a nicer set of wheels on the bike in the factory. Yeah. Other than yeah. that, I mean, I don't really have to complain, yeah. but um, you know, I think BMW screwed everybody up by just offering carbon wheels at the factory level at like a nice price point. Yeah, that that's crazy. Um, but yeah, other than that, I mean, they really... I mean, all of these bikes that you have kind of all invoke different emotions. Mm -hmm. um, but it's which one makes you feel good when you ride it. It's personal preference. Yeah. I, don't, I haven't met anyone that rode one of these that hated it at all. Um, I just think people just read stuff on the internet and assume it's not what they like. Yeah. Like when they finally throw their leg over it, they're like, God. Wish it wasn't so expensive. It's it's one. it's definitely one of these bikes that I'm like, you know, I'm like I didn't care too much about it. I just thought it looked cool, the numbers are crazy, and I'm like, you know, I just it's a pretty bike. It'll complete the collection. And when I got it, I was blown away. I just can't. And it's funny because when you were talking about like uh, how like bad it is with like without all these modifications if they're done right, because uh, Troy, uh, remember when he sent me like the original U.S. stock everything? And I tried that, and I was uh, I literally wouldn't ride it. Because the second thing is, when you got this bike, it was already tuned. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it, you've never felt what how miserable they are. Uh, yeah. Like, yeah. We saw one in the dyno for the first time and rode one. I was like, oh my god! Like somebody spent close to thirty grand, and it drives like that with a pipe on it. Yeah. But then, you know, six fifty e bike, and then after we found the maps and started working it out, I'm like makes bmw power but before that it was just i was like throw the whole bike away it was pretty i mean it had all the it has all the gear but it was like man with that computer in it it was so neutered that it was just like i could see people selling them 
Yeah, no, I would have for sure. If I had to ride it with the original US thing that it comes with and it didn't have a good tune that goes with it, I definitely would have sold it. It would have just not made any sense or just kept it as a pretty bike that I'll never ride. No, but it's like people that you're like, hey, like, is there a solution for it? And there is. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Right now we're going to work on getting the Honda, the Honda parts, the uh, 50 state legal. We have... Yamaha, we got yesterday, Aprilia, BMW, Ducati, um, all those brands are now deciding whether we do Honda or Kawasaki next, um, meaning you can use our products in the state of California, 50 state um, certification. So That's awesome. Well, you guys heard the explanation of pretty much everything about this bike from the man himself. Again, like I'm blown away that I rode back and you guys, oh, it's done. And I rode it and I'm like, there's no way like everything is perfect. And it was, you guys saw like a road amazing. It feels amazing. I can't still believe that I'm saying that this is one of my favorite bikes from the whole collection just because it doesn't make sense to me. You know what I mean? Like at the end of the day, even with the modifications I did to it, it's not that expensive. I think it's similar price to the R1M and the F RZ4 factory, which are like the cheapest in the collection, but it feels one of the best it has a lot of character it's so stable and at the same time it has like all the power that you need and i don't know just it does everything right i really like it i can't get my mind around it i just need a little bit more carbon and then i'll be completely happy with it yeah. sadly nobody makes like the parts that i exactly want yeah but we'll still get some carbon parts for it. The white one? Not the white one. I'm trying to remember. It was like black and gold. There was a new color combo. That was oh, I think the black one is not an SP. I think that's a European model only. Yeah. It's not. Apparently, there's a triple R, not an SP, yeah, SP, in Europe. Yeah. I'm but we, we only have the SPs. It has this engine, but no suspension or something. The electronics are different. Yeah. yeah I didn't look into it. These are the old junk velocity stacks for this. So now we are putting it back together. I think this video is already like extremely long. My battery is literally a sliver left. So I'll probably end this video here. Again, check the link down in the description below. Get your BT Moto flash for, I mean, this is done by them. This is done by them. So is my R1, my V4R, and my M1000. So link in the description. Thank you guys again.